Hey everyone, welcome back for part three. All right, so I, I did this one side. I'm looking at the back of the pendant just to show you what we're after. Here's the front. We're going to take the add-on wire using the 26 gauge wire that was part of our materials and I'm just going to pull about two feet off of here. We're going to coil this wire, bring it down around the frame and then attach it here and there with strategic little ties. It gives a little add-on, you know, something to the frame. I love the way it looks. And it also helps us to stash these little cut ends, you know, in and along and underneath this wire as we go. There's other tricks that I'm going to show you at the end of this video to catch ends that, you know, maybe or maybe you don't want to do this. So you can do these ends an another way and I'll show us that. But for now, go ahead and grab about two feet of your 26 gauge and I'll just unravel it. Do not put this on a bobbin because we have to feed in and out of the frame. So I'll grab a couple feet you can work with a foot and a half at a time, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm going to turn to the back of my frame. Hold on to your little 26 gauge. And I'm going to take a bend, a very sharp bend in this 18 gauge wire straight down, just like you see here, so that I can curve it along the outside of my frame wire here. So I get a plier to help me. Just work carefully. It's not a big deal. I like my bent nose, the fine ones. And I'll get right here at the edge of the wire. Okay. Just work carefully. And just make a little horizontal bend, right? Just bend it down to horizontal. That's all you got to do. Tap these, make sure they stay. And then we'll go ahead and attach our 26 gauge right here. Give yourself a leading inch so that you have something to hold on to. And as we wrap, you're going to want to grab, you know, some of these ties from the tree branch. It'll cinch them up and then it'll also stash them in between this wire and the main frame. So you'll see as we go. So I'll just use this and make a few coils to get myself anchored with this 26 gauge. Let me change my camera so that you can see a little better. I'm just going around my 18 gauge a few times. And as I go around and make my coils, I'm also going to start to bend this wire you know, just around the outside of the frame, like this side. See? And I'll find places that are needed for me to wrap into. So you want the coil to show, but it has purpose also to help you stabilize some of these branches that are moving around. The branches that are tied to the inside of the frame, if those are moving around, don't worry because we're going to catch those with the bead wires when we tie the beads on. So right now we're concerned with these outside, these outside ties right here. Stabilizing those, get your branches where you want them as you, as you go by because once you cinch it all up, then it, then that's where it stays. Try not to make any sharp turns or corners. Just work carefully and neatly. Right about here I'll start to turn it a little bit. Give yourself a breath of space because you're, you know, you're wrapping. So you see here I have some frayed ends, wrapped ends that I can cinch up while I'm passing by. This will be a great place for me to tie this, start to tie this 20 uh, start to tie this 18 gauge on. Just try to be neat about it. I've just wrapped right over that bundle. Make sure there's no slack in your wrap wire, but make sure you don't remove the space, you know, from this frame wire because you still want to stay on the outside. So I'm going to go around a couple of times. 
to stabilize that one big branch wrap right there. Keep them neat and side by side. See that? I just need a couple of them and then I'll keep wrapping. It's, you know, I'm underneath the camera so I'm at an odd angle, but you wrap a little closer to your body, be comfortable. I'm going to make a few more wraps. They don't have to be so many. They just, you know, a certain amount or anything. You can just catch the frame where you need to, where you feel like you need to. If you made that big tree branch with me, then you pass underneath it. And we'll have to make two passes, one to go this way and then one to go back down. If you try to just do the whole thing in one fell swoop, you'll cause a nice big kink. So I'll get underneath this branch first. Get my coil in place. I am trying to grab those little wires right there on my pass around. So now from here I'll come back through the frame and go to the back. Don't let this kink as you go. Try to keep your finger in there. If it kinks, just work it out. Okay, mine did right there. It's okay. Okay, so I've got that tied right there, caught those branches. I can also get that with some beads right there. And I'll just keep coiling with this wire. If you get a little kink, try to do a little with your scraping with your fingernail. It'll help you get it out. This is 26 gauge, so the kinks are a little harder to get out. Just try not to make them or try to stash them underneath. You could also do this with 20, 28 gauge instead of 26 if you felt like it. You'll have, you you know, if you're watching this ahead of time, if you're going to use 28, then reserve a few feet more than two from your tree. We reserved a couple of feet from the tree wires so that I have something to tie my beads on with. But if you're going to do this coiling with 28, then get more like 6 feet. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll just get a plier and clean that. I'll keep going. This is probably my next place where I want to connect. When you bend, you're going to come to the behind the frame. Like I said, I've already done or started one on this side, so I'm working this side. I'll just, you know, leave it crossed right there until I catch the other one up. And you can do the same. Work both sides, get them to right about here. All right, so I'm going to keep wrapping. I'm probably going to connect to my frame one more time, right about here, maybe here once. What you want to be sure of is that as you're going, you're leaving a breadth of space in between the main frame and this add-on wire. You see here, just a breadth of space so that you can attach, you know, you can wrap in with um, tree beads that might have to pass through there. Okay? And then it just gives you a little bit of a, a cup, a raised area so that these branches are covered and they don't touch the skin. Alright, so I'm going to speed up the camera. I'm going to do my wraps and attach and then when we get to uh, here, we'll make some decisions about how to, how to go forth with these wires. Okay?
just work slowly, carefully. You've got your tree attached. It's a little tricky to work from behind the, the frame. Once you get down here to the neck, you see you kind of want to dive in. So don't leave it out here, unless you want to leave it out here. I kind of like to dive in a little bit so like it fades, so it's more like it's fading away into the neck space. So I'm probably going to attach it right here where this little branch is. It gets tight between the arms. Sometimes you have to come from underneath. into that space and then tighten it up. Hold it there with your finger and just come over the little frame right there and guide your wire down. I'm going to pull a little tighter right here holding it with my bottom finger and I'm trying to scooch into that space to get my next coil and I'm going to flip to the back. Just like that right there. I'm going to flip to the back so it's easier for me to work. I'm just going to keep coiling on this piece until I get to that little armpit right there. It's tight. Like I said earlier, it's probably one of the more complicated, or I wouldn't say complicated, but just a little more challenging frame and tree design than we've had. But I feel like if you've been doing these, you can probably handle this one just fine. Right about here, I don't necessarily need to tie into that space unless I want to. I want to make a sharp bend out. So very carefully with a nice wide hardy plier like my flat nose I'm going to eyeball this bend right here at this armpit. The wires are crisscrossed, the spirals probably in your way. It's okay. Grab it just beyond that armpit, more towards the center because you need the space to turn. So right about here, see if you can see it. I'm going to hold steady with my thumb, I'm not pushing, I'm not pulling, I'm just trying to make a very sharp turn right there. Really sharp back bend that matches that arm. You see that? You can do that. Don't worry, just take a breath. And then I probably, this is short enough wire, I'm just going to terminate it right here at the neck. I'll make a few more wraps, one more maybe, just to get get it behind the neck here. one attachment right there. You don't have to do this unless your piece needs it. It's probably better to do it so that I always like to do a little more security than not to make sure nothing shifts. So there's my wrap around the frame. I'm going to look at the front. It's very pretty. It looks very nice and it'll receive my beads really, really, really nice in there, okay? So, and my arm fades away, my wire's coming out, so I've got branch coverage, and right about here, I'm going to attach, and then I'm going to make coils just around the head of, this, of the fingers here, and then I'll dive back behind. You can do yours however you'd like, okay? Just some ideas for you. So right here, this short wire, I'm probably just going to terminate it by 
scooching it in and making a couple of single wraps right there, just one actually, just to get it in between there and locked in. Scooch them together right there. Make sure I've got a nice tight wrap on that and then I'm just going to jiggle it until it breaks in between those two wires. Ooh, careful doing that. Don't shock yourself. Okay, and then you can park that. And then you can get another piece of wire, another piece of 26 gauge. Let's get another couple of feet since we'll come down. Maybe just a foot. We'll see. Let's see what I got left here. I'm going to take about a foot. So I'm going to take another foot and a half of 26 gauge and I'll go ahead and attach right here where I can discreetly. So just give yourself a leading inch. Come back onto this wire right here. Make two or three or four. You can coil the whole distance if you want to. Just keep it back behind the arm until you get to the wider space. I'm just going to keep coiling until I reach the spot that I want to connect, which is right about there. And I'm going to start to let my, I might connect actually right here. I'm going to start to let my coil, my arm kind of shoot out the side here. So I'll start my, my bend and where my coil will show. So I'm going to connect right here. i got a little gap right there. I'm going to slip underneath this branch and I'm going to dive onto the frame. Just once is enough so it's discreet and then you can keep coiling. I pull it back to the back so you can see a little better. And I'm going to coil out about an inch, maybe, I mean, a three quarter of an inch so I can make this turn a little easier on myself. Keep the other one out of your way for now. Right about here. Whoop. I connect right about here, one good spot. I can wrap up maybe a few more. Get more to here. You find a spot on yours that works. Oh. 
Oh, just hit my camera. Sorry, pet. Sorry, folks. And again, I'm leaving just a breath of space there in case I need to get my 28 gauge through there when I'm tying on beads and such. For me, I might do another one right here just because I got a bunch of little branches right there. I'm just going to make sure this coil lands right on that bundle to help hold it right there. We want to stay behind the frame. And then back here, the shorter wire, I've come underneath this one, so it'll be in my way. I'm just going to scooch it this way. We'll, we'll do the same to this side. If you want to get it out of your way, there's my starting fragment. You can cut that off too. You can do the same bend right there. If your curl interferes, like mine is going to right here, if I'm not using you know that for any other purpose, I'm going to snip it right there. Take that little tip off so that my, my bend can go better. So I'm just going to do that right now. It won't show in the front so it doesn't make any difference. Just to make it a little cleaner, I might just turn this little guy in, but keep it off that armpit so that you can turn right there, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just make my turn. It's easier to have this wire straight and then make a nice sharp curve right there. Get your hardy flat nose out, hold this frame right here. You know, you can you can do your coiling down there first, or you can just bend it and you know coil as you go. I'm gonna bend it and get it out of my way and to show you how to how to do it. So again I'll hold it right here, right to the inside of that armpit bend. So pretty much right in the center of my spiral. I'm gonna hold the wire. I'm not pushing, I'm not pulling. I'm just making a really sharp bend and you always want to, you know, it's okay to take your hands off and look. Am I bending in the right spot? I am. So I'll keep going. Easier to make a correction if you need to unbend from this position than when you're all the way, you know, real tight like that. So you get a little bend on it, you look, you say, yes, I'm in the right spot. Get back on your wire. Complete that turn and then just leave it hanging out there until you're ready for it, okay? So I'm going to go back to over here. Go ahead and get rid of this little guy. And I'm just going to cut it since it's on top. And tuck that little wire down into that space, okay? You can get a flat nose if you need to tap, I mean a nylon jaw, if you need to tap anything right here, looks all pretty good. I'll just do the gentle tapping right there, settle the frame wires together. I like the way that's looking. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it, so I'm going to keep going.
So it's going to go a little bit like that. And you'll kind of see your coils until it trails off into that space. I'm getting real short on my coiling wire here, my 26 gauge, but I'm just going to try to use as much of it as I can. I'm going to catch this frame one more time right here in these roots, and then I'm going to retire this wire and start a new one. couple more single wraps and then I'm going to start a new wire. Okay, that's going to be all this one's going to do. I like to leave them hanging out there just for a second until I get fresh wire started. So I got another foot and a half here of 26 gauge. I think I need to tell you guys more than three feet. Oh, I, I didn't think I was going to coil the whole distance and then I changed my mind and I did. So if you got it to here, hopefully you got more 26 gauge laying around. It'll take more than three feet to do this whole frame. Okay, I'm going to start this one. Get a few wraps. I don't think I need to tie in anymore, so I'm just going to wrap, wrap the rest of it. And get into the center again. So I'm going to wrap till I get to here, and then I'll make another sharp turn. This is probably going to be almost the exact distance. So if you're watching this ahead, I think I gave us 13 inches on this add-on. You might give yourself another inch or two. This is my pile of waste so far, just these little stragglies right here. So it's a pretty close-knit frame. I probably should have said that in the beginning, but keeps it exciting this way. <laughs> keeps you on your toes. Teacher changes her mind on the fly. <sighs> okay, so let's see. So right about here, you see I'm starting to... I can see my lovely coil. I really like that. It's like radiating energy. And it's going to take a dive into that armpit and obviously another turn back down the onk. Okay? So this is why I say this is almost exact. If you feel like you need to attach right here, uh, you can, it's tight, but you can come through, you know, just that little armpit area right there. You'll have some space. I would take this turn first. And again, if your spiral now is interfering, keep cutting it back. So mine is. I'm going to cut it back. I'm going to take the trim right here, take the head of that spiral out. You know, had I done a different design and did a capuchon, that spiral would have been good. Okay, so I'm going to turn now right to the inside of that armpit because the wire needs the girth for the turn. So not right here, but right here. Okay, so again, get your hardy flat plier. Make sure that this is laying where you want it. Make sure you see the position you want to bend. 
which is right here, right inside that spiral we almost used. Take a partial turn and make sure you, you're in there enough. Scooch the plier over if you think you need to go more. Whoop. You'd also be down there on your board or in a much more comforting position than, than I am. Okay, that's about right right there. Do you see that it's going to curve right there at my armpit? So I'll just complete the turn and make it come down right alongside the body here. And I'll keep coiling until I get down to here. I mean, uh, here. So I think I am going to attach this little guy right here at the armpit. I have several places I can do that, but the easiest place is obviously just like I've been doing, right through the frame. And because I don't want it to show there, I'm going to come through it from the inside going out so that the wire pulls inward and not outward. Make sure that you clear your tree, that you don't have it in the grab. Bring this wire through, get your finger in there so that it doesn't kink on you. Control the twisting. Pull it through the best that you can. You see now when I pull it tight, it sinks my wire to the inside, not to the outside. You see? And then you have control over how much you want to show. You make one little discrete attachment right here at the armpit. Ooh, I always do that. Just right there. and then keep coiling down your wire. Okay, just like that. Make sure there's no bubbles, no slack, and that's a nice, nice hold. Okay, here we go. Keep coiling. Right about here, maybe even one turn in, I could dive in, right? I think I'm going to do it right here at the edge. Push your coils back, make sure they're nice, make sure you're not buckling right here at the center. If this is shifting too much, you know, tie these together, right? I could have done that while I was up there also. I can do it afterwards too, but we still have more wire in the beads so we can cinch things even more still. If you need to. You shouldn't need to. It should be alright. Do a couple more after I push my coils back nice and tight. Make sure I really get to the edge of my roots right there. I like for my coil to show, so I'm going to go here. And I'm going to dive in through the top, not from the bottom, because then the tension will pull your coil behind you want it on the side. So even though I'm wrapping in this direction, I'm just going to dive in this way. It doesn't matter. Go this way. Grab the frame. Now when I pull, you see it helps to keep my wire on top. Don't pull so tight that you distort. It's a controlled where do I want it, which is right there. Then I'll make couple of single coils right there to hold on to it. And that's the attachment. Woo! Okay, that was a lot, you guys, but I love how that looks. On the side of the onk, I'm going to get rid of all these little leading wires so that we can really see it. It gives me a nice look and a comfortable lay on the back, too, for a pendant. Okay, so you'll repeat all that. <laughs> on this side and meet us down here at the bottom. And I'll just leave that 
right there for now. So I will get rid of this tie up here. Again, you can grab it right here and hold carefully and just do a soft wibble wobble until it breaks. Or if it's not in between something that you can do that with, like here, I would cut that. Just doing that trick won't really work there. Make sure you only cut those leading wires and not your tree branches. And then I'll tap that. Oh, that feels pretty good. If anything lifted, don't worry, we've still got work on these little ends. They'll settle even more. And then at the end, they'll be done. You won't feel them at all. But for now, just work like, like there are little kids, little honorary kids, and we just put them back into place if they pop out. Okay, just like that. Now let's do this side. Same same thing. Keep your coils side by side. Make sure there's no bubbles. Always look to the front. Make sure you're pretty in front. This is a meaningful symbol both in the Ankh as well as the Tree of Life living on top of the Ankh. The Ankh is the key of life. We've added the tree of life on top of it. And so should be a very nice, beautiful symbol for you to wear. pre-bent this wire earlier showing you how to do it so that's why I'm wrapping kind of in and out of it. Okay so right here I'm going to try to see if I can start to attach to anything. I'm probably just going to make a couple little grabs right there try to get this corner more up and onto my frame there like the other side. That's pretty good there. Probably going to use this spot right here at the neck. Come through it this way. I'll use that spiraled wire that we. This one right here. I could probably still lift it instead of trying to pass through the frame, actually. So I'm going to just do that. I get my <laughs> little wire underneath it. So you can tie right to here with this side if you need to. One is enough. If you're using 26 gauge, it's a very strong, tiny wire. So that's enough to kind of help hold that back a little bit and help hold that down. And I just jump over here and keep coiling. get back onto my wire. I can make one more little armpit attachment right here that could be discreet. And go underneath that branch. So I'll do that. My space to crawl through is kind of right here. 
nice and easy to get through because I don't have any attachment all the way to here. So I can just get these two frame wires, get a nice wrap on those. Okay, and that anchors this 18 gauge right there at the pit, the armpit. And now I'll do like the other side and keep wrapping until I get to about here and start to slant the wire off the frame so I can see it. Just going to look to the front here and make sure I start to show the coil. Probably going to start new wire that one. I thought it might make it, but my hands are hurting, so I'll get another foot and a half. 6 gauge. You can grab 2 feet if you want to. Just make sure that the wire is nice and flat. I'll just start a new piece right here. Hold on to the leading 1 inch. I don't cut those off until I'm all the way around because then it's impossible to hold to hold the added coil here. So you just keep those little one inch ends. Okay, so let's see. A few more. about there I'm going to grab that branch and attach to the frame make sure you've got a breath of space and we can look to the front here to make sure that you're coming around this corner all right Remember, we're going to come behind the frame. So I'm holding my curve here so I can get this nice turn started. So I can see where I'm going. Control any little frays. Squirrel them back. that little curve right there get that under control tips up on your bent nose and use that soft rounded side if you need to help tap anything back into place I've got a little curve here I don't want there that's it and I'll keep going 
till I get to here. I'll attach right there. It's looking really great so far. So I'll get rid of these. See that little gap right there when we added the wire? You can just scooch things back and forth. But you also, if you have a big gap before you cut this off, eyeball where it is and cover it. You know, cut this going that way. Or dive it to the back and get that little space. You can also stick beads over it. <laughs> Just like that. And cut it to the back. It's pretty good. And actually, if you pass it to the back, you could probably jiggle it until it breaks. But sometimes I just like to cut it and tap it. And that's it. And that's not there. You keep going till you get down to here. I'm going to wrap until I get close to this center. Then I'm going to make that turn before I get my coils up there because then it's hard to turn on coils. So again, grab it from the inside, right about here. I'm doing this, you know, sideways so that you can see it. You'd want to be flat with your pliers on it like this. Get a hardier turn. Okay, I just want to show you that you're grabbing and turning right about here, right inside that armpit, because the wire needs girth to turn. So make a little pre-bend, make sure that I'm turning in the right spot, and I am. So I'm going to keep going. Nice tight turn to the outside. Just like that. And that's pretty good. That's pretty even. So I'll keep wrapping into that armpit and then I'll dive in so it keeps my tension wire this way instead of outward. So a few more wraps here. It gets tricky around that little corner, but you can do it. And then here, dive to the inside to pass through the frame. And that way when you pull it, you see the tension goes to the inside of the frame and pulls that wire inside. So it has a nice vanishing point right there. And then we'll just keep coiling down this way. So I'll make one attachment here, just like I did on the other side. One nice neat tie. Hold on to it so that there's no bubbling right there. 
care and then just keep wrapping all the way down to the end to get to here. So just make this little curve If you feel like you need to get it one more, you can do that in there, but that's pretty tight. <laughs> I don't think you'll need it. But I'm probably going to need to start new wire. This isn't going to get far. So rather than start new wire here where the gap might be very visible, I'm just going to sacrifice a couple inches here, a few inches, and start new wire way up here in the armpit where the wire is not so noticeable and then it gives me the opportunity to use this little bit if I need to kind of cross tie all of these to keep it cinched up okay so both sides of this would be actually quite nice here's the front we're working on the back okay so I'll start another foot and a half of 26 gauge to get me the rest of my distance Make sure to take a break in between all of this. This is a lot of work and probably, you know, the biggest, longest tree tutorial we've done yet. So make sure you're giving your hands a break. I'll hold on to a leading inch and you see there's going to be almost no waste uh, when we get down there. So this was, again, 13 inches of 18 gauge wire for this add-on and you might give yourself another inch or two unless your measurements are exactly like mine I'm going to get right to the edge of those tree roots, push everything back, and when you feel like you can make that attachment, then do that. Right about here, and again I'm facing the back of my tree right now, I've been working on the back just because I can see the wire better and you can see it better. So a nice attachment right there. Leave a slight gap. I make a couple of singles. Ooh, okay. There it is, you guys. Wow. Oh, we've done it. Whoo, pat yourselves on the back. Whoo, rest your fingers if you're like me. I got blisters already. Whoo, we should have put our finger pads on for this one. All right, that's a fantastic job. I'm going to get rid of these wires here. Check everything before you get rid of this one if you have it and see if you need to cross tie anything. I don't think you do, but just in case you, you might. So I'll get rid of this leading wire here from my new piece. Push these coils back. And then I'll get rid of this one. Cut it with enough to make sure that you can dive that end down so it doesn't get felt. Just like that right there. It's a nice center. Okay. And now we'll come address the bottom here. We have roots to cover up in the back here. See them kind of poking out. I'm just going to tap them and lay them down. And I'm going to take these two ends and just curl up just to cover you know from behind to give it a little support. You can coil if you want to to make it look like this but leave yourself a spot at the end so that you can turn this wire up. So 
I'm just going to coil out, leave myself about a quarter of an inch at the end here. Doesn't have to be exact, just like that. Leave that little fragment. Get your round nose plier. Get on the little tip of this. From here to here, it's probably a three quarter of an inch. From here to here, it's probably an inch. There's going to be no waste. So I'm going to make a bend in this. I'm showing my coil. I'm just going to turn a little spiral. So like this one's going to turn a half a spiral and this one's going to turn a half a spiral. That's kind of what you're after. Probably not explaining that very well. But at the same time, you still want your little coil right here to show. It's just kind of like that. Right there. And hopefully these two will meet somewhere close to the middle. <laughs> if they don't meet in the middle, we'll just set them off to the sides a little bit and it'll be fine and you'll have this one to tie in, okay? That gives you a little buffer between these roots and the body. So I'll do a few wraps on this side, and it gives a nice little flare to the bottom of this onk. I'll wrap a few. It's so short here, I'm just gonna do it this way. My fingers are hurting now. And we still have beads to tie on, y'all. It's probably going to be a four-hour tutorial by the time it's done. Maybe three and a half. Okay, this one's really short. I probably don't have a tie wire in here, but push your coils back. I'll go ahead and just get rid of that because that's worthless to me. Take my round nose. Get on the very tip of this. Start to make a nice turn in. Had my wires been even, I might have the same amount, but this one is slightly longer than the other one. And that's okay. See, if you give yourself longer wire, you can do more like that, and I think that that's a little better on you. This one I went a little short, so I'm going to cut them to be even, but when you cut this 18 gauge, give yourself maybe 15 inches if you're watching ahead, just so you can, you know, have a little flex down here. I'm right on the noodle and about four millimeters off. You kind of want these spirals to be able to just land in that little area behind your roots right there. And then we have a little tie wire that we can tie into the branches. And that gives you a little design down here that's really attractive, kind of make them even. And then you have your little bit of 26 gauge or 28 gauge, whatever you did this with, to tie in to the roots right here. So I'll take this one, just discreetly find a nice spot. dive into my frame. Make sure it comes over the roots nice. Can't see it. Maybe I go two times. Since I only have this one wire, I might just jump across and tie the other one too. Instead of putting a new wire there. So I'll go two times. There, got that one. And now I'm just going to mosey over here and, and get this one with the same wire. If you have, if you had more on this side, you just use that one. But otherwise, you got to kind of make sure you can jump over without it being seen. Go into there, come out the front, and 
Where did it go? Let me try that again. Sometimes it's a little jiggle. There it is. Pull it through from the front. Grab that wire and make sure I can come back through without disturbing the scene of my tree roots. Oop, I just slipped. So I can dive in here instead of crossing over in an odd way. Come back to the back. See that? So now I don't see that wire, but I've got it on this side where I need it. I've got one attachment there. I can get another one straight through here. I'll make one coil around this guy. It does, it's not complicated. I'm just trying not to add another wire. And I didn't have a remnant from this side or an end fragment from this side. So I got my tie and I'll just make, since I've got a gap now, you get the idea though. Work yours and hopefully it looks kind of like that. When you feel secure you can just tie it off here in the back. I might go one more because I got a little space. So I'm going to come through this way. I think I can get it right through there. See, I put a stretch through it. That's, that's what I say not to do, because then you can see that. Anyway, come from the back. Tie yours on the way you need to, and then we'll go do the beads now. Just like that. Get rid of that guy in the back. You know, tie yours up the way you feel like you need to, and make sure there's nothing there. That all feels pretty good. Make sure these points are down. So this one's a little long. Just snip it clean, make sure that it's laying down and not that the point is out. You want to make sure the point is down so that doesn't cause a scratch. Alright, so just like that. Go through and tap anything down that you feel. And that's beautiful. I love that. I love the way that looks down here. Just try to make it even. Either scooch one up or the other one down, whichever you need to do. And that's a beautiful frame. Okay, this all can be enjoyed just like this. You know, but now we're going to go through and add our favorite beads. We'll tie them on using 28 gauge here to the front. And just like the tree in last month. I'm not going to do too many. I'm going to put nice little scatterings. I'll put a few down here in these branches as well. Okay, so we'll get that done next. Woo! Congratulations so far, you guys. Okay, so here we go for beads. I've got my little beads out here on the tray. On my felt tray so that they don't bounce around on me and I'm not going to spend too much time on bead sewing here because we've done this in several of the other videos but I will get us started and then you can scatter yours and finish it how you feel like your imagination wants to see these beads I'm taking 28 gauge I've got a foot and a half as my habit to do and I'm just going to attach here to the center of the top of the tree. Let me change my camera so that you can see some of this. I'm just passing it through the top here. I'm going to kind of 
even the wires out so I've got an even amount on both sides. I'll just take a couple of wraps right here to get anchored. And I'll just start with my right hand side. Just getting anchored right here. I'm going to pick up a couple of green beads, the real small Pyrido. I'm going to use the end of my wire kind of like a little needle and pierce them to pick them up. They're pretty small. It's pretty tedious, <laughs> but it's beautiful when it's done. Up here it's a little bulky, but it's a little bulky. So I might just try to cover some green beads right here to fill this space. I like to take a couple of them at a time. I don't like to make long runs with the beads. I like to sew them on two and three at a time so that it looks really natural versus like straight straight runs of beads. I like to try to just cluster them. And I alternate between the green Pyrdos that I have that are bright green like this chip. I have some tiny little faceted green garnets and then I also have some darker I think these are green appetite for some shadow some shadow beads if I want them just shadows here and there Ooh. and I'll just work carefully to pick some green beads up and fill in some spaces here at the top let them drop all the way down so I've got another two just going to sit them kind of right up here, cover that shoulder a little bit, hold them and make sure there's no slack in the wire so that they don't jiggle about. See like that? Hold them in place and then get that tie in nice and tight. Okay. Then you can pick up a few more beads here. I might go to a few berries and make this similar to the tree of five fruits in my last one, in my last tutorial. And I'll just cluster some berries right next to it. Just find cute and attractive spots. Work around your tree. Put them as you like them. And I'm going to scatter them a little more scarce than not. So right there I'll get the slack out of my beads. Sometimes you have to go through catch a branch, hold it all in place, come back up. If you try to just do one big loop it's gonna kink on you. And then get your wire so that the beads don't have slack in them so they lay nice against that little branch right there and they don't jiggle. If they jiggle you just wrap it a little more. Okay so we'll keep working. I might do one more wrap right there just for security. I appreciate you guys being here with me for these tree projects. They're like a small meditation to me, like I said earlier. That's why I take my time and I don't I don't chop too much of it off. I like to spend the time with you. That's cute. I want to leave some of my branches, so these are kind of big. I might just do one right there. I like to see my branches. If you've been enjoying, enjoying the tree series, please leave me comments or even look me up on social media and show me some pictures of your beautiful creations. It makes me very happy to see your work 
and to see or to hear that you've been enjoying these video tutorials. There will be one tree a month for the rest of 2023 and then we'll see how we do after that if you guys want more maybe we'll come up with some new tree ideas for 2024 we'll see you'll let me know how you feel maybe you have some requests if you have requests i would take requests Ooh, these little ones are very little it takes a little patience to get them on there I might just turn it back. Yeah, right there is cute. So hopefully you have some beautiful days and some nice quiet time to work on these. Oop, a little bead fell through to the back. Sometimes that happens. You should push it back. Push it back to the front. Oh. Get the slack out of the wire. And I'm just tying also, not only to my branches, but I've got the big spiral. We have the big spiral in the back that you can, you know, and those big wires in the back that you can attach to as well. You've got branches over here, you've got space in between your coils, so you can take some of these out to the edges if you want to. I'm going to get one more actually. There's a little bit of gap there. Look to see where you like them. And you might make them more clustered at one side and a little more scattered on the other side just to give your tree some variety. You know, I always feel like with these kinds of things, natural projects like trees, to be a little bit off is nice. That's cute. I'll do all that. And then I'll drop, you know, I'll do a few more here and then I'll just kind of trickle them down. So I'll make the top a little heavier on mine and then I'll trickle them down and spread them out a little bit more. See, the beads want to roll around because they're very tiny. So get them where you want them and try to hold on to them as you feed the wire back through. And again, I'm in the camera, so gravity's fighting me because I'm trying to be upside down. But you'd be closer to your board. Oop, try not to get little kinks like that. But if they happen, it's okay. You find yourself to the outside of the frame and you need to jump back in or you feel like you just need to grab the coil, you can do that because we left our little gap, little airspace there for you to pass through. Try to make them line up so that it's not odd. Just like that. Can't see that. And I can go back from the back back into the front okay so work on yours thank you again i'm going to go ahead and just turn the mic off now and probably do some quiet beating here you can enjoy yours and i will see you at the end of this with a finished piece and a beautiful chain Oop. see that i got some gap right there that's why you don't leave it because now i got a big stretch wire right there so I'm just going to squish those in. That's how you take care of that. <laughs> squish it in or drop another bead in there. Okay.
just going to travel down. I'm going to show you how you travel along your tree. If you need to get to another spot, don't just stretch the wire or make odd moves across your tree. It's twisting in a certain direction. So if I need to come down that branch, I'm going to try to follow the direction of the twist if I can rather than making just an odd wrap right there. So I want to come down a little lower but I don't want to cover those branches with beads. So you see what I mean? I'm just going to do more of a kind of a little spiraling down rather than a straight stretch or a coiled wrap. So it's less noticeable. Okay, so for me, that little bit of beadwork up there is enough. I like the coverage. I like to see my branches. And now I've anchored a fresh wire down here, and I'll just drop two or three beads and do the same on this side. So I've added just those few right there. I'll do a couple more here, and then that's going to be it for a beautiful project. I think that's turning out spectacular. I really hope you're enjoying yours so far. So we'll do a couple more over here. Okay, I'm adding my little ones to here. Remember as we're passing by these branches with our beads, I'm also, you know, getting a loop here and there to anchor these spots right here. So don't forget to do that if they're shifting. Then it's a good opportunity for you while you're tying your beads in here to anchor those down. Okay, once we get all our beads sewn on, just finish that little bit, and we're happy with our design. Everything feels good. The last little thing we'll do is the small magic trick to assure that our ends don't go anywhere. And I'll show you that. Here's the product. It's called Super New Glue. It's a jeweler's glue from Euro Tools. Okay, less is more. I usually, I never tip this over onto my, never do that. Um, what I do is I tip this bottle and get a couple of dabs onto plastic, and then I take a tiny uh, bit of maybe, you know, 26 gauge here. I make a little tiny spoon, and I'm going to do that for us right now, so that I can pick the glue up and deliver it to the spot or two on my pendant where I need it. Okay, so just get a little scrap bit of 26, make a tiny little spoon like that. Get some plastic because super glue doesn't stick onto plastic and neither does this jeweler's glue. I'm just going to dab a small dot of it so that I can work with a safe amount. 
So then I'll take my spoon, I'll pick up just the smallest little dollop of glue. It's a little more flowy than, than stringy. I just don't have good glue bottles here. But I would take the smallest dollop of glue and then you can deliver it exactly to the frayed ends where you need it. Okay? And you don't have to worry about the possibility of that bottle spilling out all over your all over your tree. I don't go crazy with it. I literally only dab it into the tiniest little spots, mostly where down here where it's tight and there's a lot of tree roots or you know right into these areas here, right at the ties where I've made my cuts. Okay, so you'll pick up glue on the end of your little wire spoon pretend I have glue on here. It'll look like a little bubble. And then you'll just go through and tap. See, mine is a little stringy. You'll tap just where you've made your cuts. Okay. Lay that down like that for, you know, a couple minutes, three, four minutes. And then all of that should be ready to touch. You don't want to use too much of that glue because if you're going to patina this tree, those tiny little spots won't take a patina. So go very sparingly on the back, make sure that it doesn't bleed over to the front, and tap only the little frayed cuts where you feel like it might pull out. You don't need to do them all. Like here I don't have any little, I don't have wire over that right there. That's, that's a spot I might tap here, etc. Okay? And that's it, you guys. Woo! That's a beautiful tree. It's a beautiful onk. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's put our favorite chain on this. Oh, so gorgeous. And see what it looks like with our favorite one millimeter chain. I like to use this 1.5 millimeter ball chain. Woo! That's spectacular. I love it. And I hope you love it. And I hope you make a few and enjoy them. Thanks for being here. Please leave me comments or a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project or were able to make one. And I would love to see it. If you made one, please look me up on social media and let me let me see your gorgeous work. All right, you guys, much love. I hope you find a lot of enjoyment in these, and I will see you for the next one.